22 years ago, there was a birth. 22 years ago, a place called Performing Arts Studio West was born, and it was created by an amazing man. We have this man here today. He is the founder and the director of Performing Arts Studio West, Mr. John Paces. Hey, John. Hey, David. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you, good to see you man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> what? I'm here. You're here. I'm here. And you know, first of all, before I wanted to go any further with questions, I wanted to thank you for inviting me to your family seven years ago because, you know, it's been icing, icing on a cake for me, for my life. Um, I mean, I heard about Performing Arts Studio West years ago, and years ago, 15 years ago, and I've always, always wanted to come. So I finally came one day, and I walked into the place, and I was like, whoa, I mean, you go through this, this first room, and, and, and then you, you have your office, and the, the music uh, bay, and then the editing bay, and then this big area where there's, the, the, you know, where you could, do stage productions, and then you go outside to see another building, which has uh, the, the the agencies, and then the the, the dance room. So I'm like, I, I, I anyway. That's that's the description that I first went, and I I said, as you remember, I said, I, I, I if you ever have a job, I'm opening. I would love to be there. And three months later, thank yeah, you. Didn't take too long after that, did it? No, nope, no. Nope. So. Um, and may I say, David, before we go on, may I say that you being part of the family and you joining us, how many years ago was that now? I think seven years. Yeah. It has enriched the studio. It has enriched our all our lives. It has enriched the lives of our participants. And personally, it has enriched my life. So thank you for being open to, to joining us and being part of the family for so many years now. Well, it's, it's a true blessing. A true blessing. So... 22 years, huh? Yeah, this, yeah. Today, if this is airing on June 1st, then it's today, yes. It's today. Yeah. Yay. Woo. Happy anniversary. Woo! <laughs> to all of us, to all of us. Um, did, is it, is it what you expected? I mean, after, uh, did you expect it to get to 22 years? Did you, what did you expect? I had no idea, you know. Um, I mean, we started off so small, and, you know, just, just an idea of, okay, um, what can I share? Because I had already been working with uh, adults with disabilities for 17 years prior to opening the studio. And um, so this September is going to be 40 years that I'm working with adults with disabilities. Can you believe that? 40 years. That's wonderful. And um, so, you know, I left the job that I was at because the agency closed. And, you know, I mean, I had, I had, been a musician, I had been an actor, a lot of stage work, teeniest little bit of TV, teeniest little bit of film, but mostly music and, and stage stuff. And uh, I always used to use music in my classrooms when I was a teacher way back in the day, uh, you know, starting off working with the population to kind of bring these guys out of their shell and have, you know, have fun and kind of explore things with them that, that they may not have even known that, that was in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when that agency closed down, I'm just going, God, what am I going to do? You know, yeah. I said, you know, I, I, I know working with this population. I, I you know, I've, I've been a musician. I've been a singer. I've, I've been an actor. I've been a dancer. I've danced professionally for, you know, a lot of years. And I said, maybe I can just start, maybe I can start something different, you know? Yeah. So um, I went to our funding source, the regional center and, you know, put a proposal together and said, what do you guys think of this? And they said, this sounds different than anything that we have. Um, so they gave me a very, very small grant and I bought a little, little camera and I bought a little tripod and I bought a little TV and I bought a little keyboard and some music books and tables and chairs and stuff. And that front room that we have, yeah, the front room that we have, which is, you know, not huge, but pretty good size. Yeah you know, that's where we started. That was the whole building back then. And um, the front management offices or the front uh, support service offices were 
all of our offices. And there were times when we had eight people working out of that one office. You Wait, know, that one where Damien works? Where Damien is, yes. Oh now it went back a little further. It went back to where the staff uh, lounge is. Right. So it had that other four or five feet or whatever that is. And the side door coming in was another entrance to that. But that's where all of us were working. So we had all our computers, all our recording equipment, everything there. So, um, but I really had, you know, I had no idea how far this thing would go. And I thought, you know, maybe the goal is if we could do, if we could do some original shows, you know, or we could do, we could go around to, um, to uh, uh, retirement homes or other day programs and right. put on musical presentations. I sound condescending. Put on little musical presentations. Well, yeah. like like it, like the shows you put on are little. Yeah. Well, back then <laughs> it, was, it was me with a keyboard and, and five you know five performers right. singing, and we we would go to a go to a retirement home or we go to another uh, day program and, and entertain. And then I thought and. I thought maybe if we could get these guys background work someday, that might be, you know, that might be something that we could lead to that. But I didn't really know. And so, you know, I started off as the, as the only employee. And uh, I started off with five people, one who is still with us today, Pam Rauka. So happy hey, anniversary to Pam, too. It's 22 hey, Pam. For her. Hey, Pam. Happy anniversary <laughs> to her. And um, then... Our ratio, and still is, it's a one to six ratio, and so it's one staff person for every six participants that we have. Right. So up until my seventh participant. It was just you? It was just me. When we got that seventh participant, I said, I got to hire somebody else. Right. So we started finding people here and there, and, you know, uh, it grew and grew and grew. I mean, some of our very, very early People that we with us that were with us, excuse me, were Diana Elizabeth Jordan, who came in as an acting teacher, and she popped in and out because she was still in grad school, you know, going for her master's in theater at the time. Carmel was there pretty early, and um, boy, I think out of the crew that we have now, those are the ones who have been with us the longest. But uh, so I, I had no idea where it was going. I really did. What a great beginning. I mean, what, and, and, and it is like, you know, from going to a little, you know, little box that just opens up and becomes a whole, you know, a whole world. Um, what, do you, what are you most proud of? Uh, I think the, the sense of passion among the staff that we have put together, the family that we have put together. I mean, everyone on staff is, is so passionate about what we do and has such a desire to share what we do with the people that we work with. Mm. And I think, that, I think that's what I'm most proud of. And I think everything else that has happened and hopefully greater things will happen, more things will happen, uh, will come from from that mm. from that from the from the sincerity from the passion from the from the uh commitment that we all have mm. i i think that i think that's how anything in life builds yeah yeah and we and, and it was such a group we have i mean it really is every twice a week now we get on our meetings and every day right before 10 o'clock i get i get excited because i it it's like what a beautiful way to see the you know all those beautiful faces that we we work with. Yeah, it is great, and it just you know in, in this crazy time of COVID nineteen and you know what we're having to go through, it it really makes me. Well, I know that I miss everybody, you know. Yeah. But seeing everybody a couple of times a week and talking with them on the phone repeated, you know, we talk to each other on the phone all the time, yeah. and and it makes me realize how much I miss everyone and that we have really become this creative family and oh my god all the, i mean the projects that we've created over the years oh. we've, we've done together i mean it, it's like we're this we're this machine we're this crazy passionate insane machine yeah pumping this stuff out and it, it, it's truly amazing how 
you every year you write these new shows and they just like come out of you and they're brilliant i mean i i was looking at all all the different shows um i mean every year we have a harv stevens event <laughs> mm -hmm. the the next installment of of the harv stevens we you have um oh my god musicals and and uh, um recovered and then the, the the most recently last year the alternative yes yeah and those have been very you know extremely exciting and one of the things i i like is how we're upping the game with regard to production values and stuff and i have to tell you david the first two original musicals that we did yeah we did in that front room right. we okay you know where we have the barn in in the back where yeah. all that storage equipment is but that used to just be empty space, okay? And so we could literally take where the music area is, you know, towards Damien's office. Yeah. We would make the stage at an angle like this. So center stage was the corner wall. Okay. And we could fit 80 audience members going back into the building. And we did two full-scale, fully produced, fully lit fully, you know, the sound quality and everything, but we did them in that room before we had any other space to do them. And they were, I mean, super fun stuff. I mean, the, the first one, the first original show we did was called The Ecstasy of Dogs, Sparks, and Giants. And that was about a, a, a woman that was filled with such anxiety and she had agoraphobia and she was afraid to leave her apartment. So every, she she fell asleep one night in front of her television right and she falls asleep with the remote in her hand and when she wakes up she sees herself on the television and she starts this dialogue with herself and her television personality comes back as her comes back as her therapist comes back as different different parts of her personality and She's she's working through this struggle of how do i how do i get back to my life yeah you know how do i get back to my life and all the music was i licensed music from um this is why it's called the ecstasy of dog sparks and giants yeah. there's uh ecstasy was the band xtc now i tried to license their stuff but it was far too expensive they were really difficult about it but i kept it in the title because i liked it um, Dogs was from a, a band called the Bonzo Dog Band, and one of the members of the band was Neil Linus, who wrote for many years for uh, for um, uh, Monty Python, the Monty Python guys. Oh. Did their movies, did all their music for their movies. Uh, so we had music from that. Dog Sparks Giants. There's a band called They Might Be Giants that are are you know, and these are all quirky, odd songs. Yeah. So it was a collection of those songs and then two original songs, one written by myself and one written by our music director at the time. And the band was live on stage. We started off behind a partition and then all of a sudden the partition moves and we're interacting with her and, and she's going, who the hell are you? And we're going, we're your backup musicians. <laughs> we're here to help you through this thing, you know? And all the songs were her trying to work out stuff in her head. So there would, there would be something where there'd be a knock at the door and she'd open the door and a group of like Elvis impersonators would come in with gigantic foam Elvis wigs and they'd do the, an Elvis type of number or there'd be a rock number or there'd be, you know, all different styles of music. And um, it was her working, working her, working her, her her ability to, to, to finally bust through and get out again. And at the end, she does leave the apartment. We did a great thing where she ran out the door and then on the TV, we cut to a shot of her running through an apartment building and going by the pool. And all the people that she had seen in this dream, this Alice through the looking glass type of experience were people from her, from her actual life. Wow. There, there was a pair of uh, uh, conjoined twins who had come in and they were sisters who lived in the building. There was the pool guy who came in as somebody else. There was a delivery guy that came in as somebody else. Anyway, but it was wacky as hell. And uh, it was a good jumping off point, you know, for, uh, you know, for, uh, for what we were doing. And I said, you know, it was always my goal. I just wanted to say, I, I, I want to do stuff that makes 
people laugh, number one, yeah. and think, number two. And then also for them to say, gosh, dang, that was a, that was a great show. That was a great show. And not, hey, that was a great show for people with disabilities. Right. But that was a great show, you know. Yeah. And, you know, fortunately, we have always had so many strong character types that were strong enough actors to be able to allow me to say, I can write for this person. Yeah. I can write for this person's personality right. or speech pattern or, or you know, if, if somebody was on the autism spectrum and they had a, an interesting way of communicating, I can write for that person. So, so that was the first, you know, jumping into something that was original. Well, and one thing I love about performing arts and the family that we all have is that when I go in to teach a class, I'm teaching, I'm teaching John uh, he, he, Tucker, or I'm teaching this actor or that actor. It's the, it's, it's not about the disability. Right. Because all of these wonderful students, all of you wonderful students who go to Performing Arts Studio West are amazing actors. I mean, everybody has their strengths. Every, you know, I have my strengths, I have my weaknesses, but we, we focus on that and that's what I love about it is I, I, I'm teaching an acting class. Right, exactly. And it's, and it's marvelous because, you, you know, you and the other teachers we don't, we don't dumb down things for these guys. You know, it's not, if you walk into that and you close your eyes and we listen to the way that you guys are, are delivering the curriculum or, and it's, it's like listening to a professional acting class because that's essentially what it is. That's what we're going for, obviously. Well, I mean, especially in this town because you know, we're, they're going out for auditions, they're booking, mm -hmm. you know, roles. So it's like, you know, and, and I, 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 you know, one of my things is people ask me how I, what sparked me to get into this community? What sparked you to get into this community? I mean, you were acting, you were singing, you were. Yeah. yeah. Well, my mom was a special education teacher. All right. She was a resource specialist and she worked, she worked with people with special needs on the, on the upper end of the, you know, of, of the, um, somewhere on the spectrum, some, you know, just had some other kind of mixed diagnoses. Um, I, ha I, I have a cousin uh, a couple years older than me who has a developmental disability, so I was always comfortable around the population. When I was in junior high school, this is so funny. Yeah. Sure how old I am, I wasn't middle school back then, right? It was junior high. And um, <laughs> there, there was a class of a group of students there, so this is seventh and eighth grade, and these were all people with physical disabilities. There were people with CP, there were people, you know, wheelchair users. And I found them so goddamn interesting, you know, to talk to them and, and they were funny. They had marvelous imaginations. Uh, we would, you know, do wheelchair races and stuff on the asphalt and, and read Mad Magazine. And I'm just going, God, these guys. And each, each one of them was, was, was limited in some kind of way physically but their brains were, were just so, you know, they were so intuitive about things and, 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 and so intact in their communication skills and what they thought about it was just like any other person uh, of that age. And I just found them super interesting. So I don't know, I always just gravitated to the population. And um, then when I, when I moved to LA in 1980, and again, this, this June, I came in June, I think, or maybe wow. whatever, um, uh, 40 years in LA. You know, I'm originally from the Bay Area, as you are. Right. Uh, spent spent three years in New York, back and forth between New York and... and, and I was seeing that, you know, I was uh, going over everything. And in New York, you studied, you studied with Sanford Miser. I did. I did. Who can what? say that? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> One of the most frightening experiences of my life. I was 19 years old, you know. Mm -hmm. I was 19. Probably probably a little too young to, to really, you know, know what was in here yet. You know, I did, I did one year of, you know, one year of college and um, I, I just found that it, it wasn't for me, you know, so much. All I wanted to do, all I wanted to do was theater and music, you know, 
and I was, you know, from the time I was 15, you know, I had done, you know, theater in high school and theater and community theater and theater and summer theater and theater at the college. And, and the college that I went to had a, an amazing theater department. I mean, every technical bell and whistle that you could have Im imagined was there. So I was used to this high-end production. And my, my drama professor, the theater professor at the time, he just said, have you thought about really doing this? I mean, about studying and going on and doing something more than this. And I said, I would love to. I said, I would love to. And he had gone to the Playhouse, you know, back in the, probably the early 1960s, I would think. Right, right. And he just said, I, I can put in a recommendation. I can, I can call Sandy or write him a letter right. and say that I have somebody that I think would really benefit from this. And so I said, yeah, sure. So, you know, the at 19 he and he escorted me and, an, and another uh, uh, young lady out there because he thought she was going to have a, a great shot too he took us out to new york he helped us get settled in got into the playhouse and i did not get asked back for the second year you know it's a two-year program and you have to be invited back the second year um and i think what i learned that first year I don't think really sank into me until I was, get this, until I was in my 30s and I was taking a film acting class, on camera acting class from Charles Conrad in Burbank. He's now. Ah, yeah. Charles Conrad was the disciple of Sandy Meisner, who Meisner set, sent out to LA in the 1950s when there was still a studio system. Right. And he was working with act with you know guys like Jimmy Stewart, yeah. you know, and he, he had a great story about, about Jimmy Stewart. He said, "He goes when he's on camera and he's working, it doesn't look like he's doing anything. It doesn't look like he's doing anything, but when you go in and watch the dailies, it just it, it, it's like magic." And so I think that didn't sink into me till I actually had an opportunity to um, To watch myself on tape on a regular basis, yeah. and I think I sucked a lot of the times when I was in my head. Right, but there would be those moments of magic, and that's what that's what Conrad would do, and this is what this is what uh, um, what Meisner would do too. He would sit there and watch, you know, watch very very carefully, and he would he would just stop you, and he'd go right there. That's it. Everything else you just everything else you did was bullshit. But right there, that is it. And Conrad would go roll back the tape, and you'd see, and all of a sudden you would see you'd be out of your head, and you'd see where that absolute honesty would be. Yeah. And it was the most fascinating thing in the in the world to me. Wow. And um, you know, uh, it was just it was fascinating. So um, I don't know where we were going with. No, that. I no, I, but just that you were that you had been in the Bay Area. You grew up in the Bay Area. Uh, which I did, and then you went to New York. So you've been all around. You've you've had you founded a band in the Bay Area. You were a lead singer in LA bands. Yeah. Uh, you were you're a, a voiceover artist. For did some voiceover too, yeah, for like uh, video games and that video. kind of stuff, and and um, narration for for you know state and government type of uh, uh, you know educational educational uh, projects. Right. And you studied, you studied puppeteering with uh, Jim Henson and Frank Oz? Yeah. You know what? It was, <laughs> I loved puppets ever since I was a kid. I had a, I had a little puppet theater, you know, when I was a kid, me and my, and my brother. And it was like a little cardboard theater that, that my parents got me. And we had marionettes, and then we also had hand puppets. And what we would do oftentimes is we would put on like, you know, 45 records. Yeah. And we would just, you know, take the puppets and like, you know, dance around with the puppets and stuff, and they'd be up there and doing this thing. Yeah. And so I always loved, I always loved puppets, and I thought they were fascinating. And then, then um, I, I, I loved, I'm dating myself completely, but things like Kukla Fran and Ollie that were on back in the day. I love um, Sherry Lewis with Lamb Chop and Hush Puppy and Charlie Horse, and and any eventual. The first thing I wanted to be, the yeah. first thing I wanted to be, 
you know, kids, I go, I want to be a fireman. I want to be this. I want to be that. I wanted to be a ventriloquist when I was six years old. I'm just going, wouldn't being a ventriloquist be the most fascinating thing in the world? And so I got myself a, I got myself a dummy. I bought myself a book or my parents bought me a book on how to practice ventriloquy. And I, you know, I started playing around with that. And, you know, it didn't lead obviously to that being any kind of a vocation, but it sparked and kind of stayed in here with what you can, you know, what you can do with making an inanimate character yeah. look alive. So what had happened, this is when I was in New York. And at the time, this is pre Muppet show. So early 1970s, because Muppet yeah. show probably started 75 around, I think around then. Right. And, you know, what a, what a fabulously funny variety show that was with so many stars at the time that, that, that they were on this. I mean, great stuff. I remember that from being a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. So prior to the Muppet show, they, they were going to do a Broadway show. Okay. So they held auditions for puppeteers. And they saw about 200 people. They picked 20. Yeah. And I was one of those 20 people. And the audition was just like um, Jim and Frank in a room and a bunch of bunch of puppets, none of the famous characters, but just more generic kind of puppets. Yeah. And say, well, do you do voices? Yeah, I do voices. You know, okay. let me see some of your voices. Let me, here's this puppet. What, what kind of character would this be? And so I just played around with it and I, I, I got, you know, I got a call uh, a couple of weeks later, I guess. And they say, you want to, you want to come do this? I'm just going, Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? I said, are you kidding me? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And so we did a training session with them prior to the Broadway show. Right. Um, the Broadway show never went down. Okay. It never went down. I, in the meantime, had come back to California for a vacation. I had, I had done some, some theater that summer too, which is another great story about how crazy actors are and how hard they work when they love something. Mm -hmm. I come back to California and um, I got really sick because I burnt myself out, you know, from summer theater and I got mono really bad and I was on my back for six months practically. I had to move back in with my parents. I didn't do anything for six months. Yeah. But um, so I had to, I said, well, that's one thing I lost out on that relationship, at least, even though the, the, the uh, Broadway show didn't go up. But right. I said, dang, that's one of those opportunities just kind of slipped away, you know. And at the, at, at the same time, I had, I had auditioned for Grease on Broadway when it was still running on Broadway. And I was on my, I had been called back. I was on my third audition. For Grease. And, yeah, for Grease. And um, I got a call too when I was in California. We'd like to use you in the show. And I said, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm here in California and I'm not well, so I can't come back. So at the time, those two losses, whatever, right, were so devastating to me. But then I think with where I am now, had that stuff happened, I'm yeah. guessing Performing Arts Studio West wouldn't have happened. No. You know? it's, it, it is so true that we go through certain things in our lives. And, and we, I, I could say, when you were talking about all these different things that you have done, it made me see... You, even deeper than I have, I mean, I've known you for s more than seven years, but to see, see all the, the levels that you have inside of you that, that brings, brings out you. And thank God you did say no to that because I think you're right. I think Performing Arts Studio West wouldn't have happened. You know, I always think too, and, and just as, as an adjunct to the, to the, um, to the puppeteering thing. I did get a chance when I came to LA many, you know, many years later and, and uh, to be part of two very large scale, wonderfully produced uh, um, television projects um, and be able to work with giant puppets on, you know, with, you know, multi people, you know, uh, manipulating these things, you know, watching yourself on TV cameras, wearing headsets and fabulous yeah. sets and castles and you know dungeons and all sorts of wild wild things so i did get the opportunity to do that professionally which i was i was very happy uh and um so you know it came around it's all that's it. everything that we go through everything that we learned everything that we experienced i think it goes into this you know it goes into this bottle you know you put the cork on it and then 
when you need it, you take the cork out and out comes the magic that, that, that you've, you've learned or acquired and you put it towards something else, you know? That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, I, uh, we do have such a great staff and to have Megan there and God and, and Lindsay and I, I could go on, but I mean, everybody, everybody, everyone. And I have a little, uh, a little surprise here just to uh -oh. have people join in. Hey. hey. I look like it might be some of our working actors. I think so. I think it would be uh, uh, just a few. I knew, and you've been on the set. Like I see that Luke, uh, Luke Zimmerman's coming on. You were on the set with Luke. Yes. And Isaac. Oh my goodness. Hey guys. The Isaac Leva. Isaac, hi. hi, Isaac. You know, two, two. Of the, I, I think you know. Certainly, most fun experiences that I've had coaching on set have been with Isaac. And Isaac, a, a number of years ago, did a, did a film called Any Day Now with Alan Cumming and Garrett Dillahunt and a bunch of other great people. Right. And what a heartwarming, wonderful, sad, funny film. So for people out there, if you have not seen Any Day Now, you got to rent this thing and have a box of Kleenex with you because it is beautiful. And Isaac was so amazing in this and one of the things i remember so clearly that that um that um alan said was that working with isaac made him remember what it's like to be a good actor because he was so in the moment with every single thing that was going on perfect example there was a scene that was done that was supposed to be Christmas morning. You remember that scene, Isaac? Mm -hmm. It was Christmas morning in their apartment. And we shot this out and God knows where this place was. And it was probably 95 degrees on set. It was in a tiny little space. Everybody was wearing holiday sweaters. They were sweating bullets. And, you know, and here we're supposed to imagine that this is Christmas morning, but when Isaac walked onto the set, yeah, it was Christmas morning. <laughs> the excitement that you had, Isaac, when he saw a tree and he saw presents and he saw, he saw you know, uh, Alan and, and Garrett as his loving two fathers unwrapping gifts, it was absolutely so genuine and so real and that's what alan said he just goes he is so in the moment he goes if he's he goes all his emotions are right here all his emotions are right here if he's happy pow out it comes if he's sad pow out it comes and there's not that thing where actors are gonna go you know i i don't I, I, no intellects intellectualization at all with regard to the acting process and that's what made him so brilliant in this film that carried over to when he was working with Brian Cranston, for God's sake, uh, you know, <laughs> in, in uh, Wakefield. Having, that oppor having the opportunity to work with Brian Cranston in a film, I mean, my God. And it was that same thing. And, and almost all of the scenes that, that, that Isaac had with him were up in the attic. And for those of you who don't know the story, Wakefield is about a man who basically uh, goes missing from his family. He's got a beautiful wife played by Jennifer Gardner, two right. beautiful teenage daughters, and he decides this life is too much. He backs away and hides in the attic above his garage and everybody thinks he is either dead or just missing. And yeah. he observes and watches his family through binoculars and yeah. then he sneaks out at night to eat out of garbage cans. It's a bizarre story. So Isaac plays a, a, one of a group of, of, of neighbors with right. a disability who are working with, uh, you know, it's kind of like a group home situation. And they are the only ones, he and uh, another, uh, another uh, person with a disability, I played by uh, Pippa Bennett Warner, I think is her name. Oh, and forgive me if I, if I get that wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Mm -hmm. British actress, so talented so talented and they 
see him through the window and they eventually sneak up into the attic. And the first time Isaac goes, Isaac's character, Herbert, goes into the attic, there's all these things that would traditionally be, you know, there's a, there's a baby carriage, there's, you know, discarded something or another else, there's something else. And do you remember this, Isaac? And there was, mm -hmm. a, there was a wedding dress that was hanging in plastic. And what the director had told him, he, she said, just go around and look at everything. Just look at everything. And so, so we're going, okay, you, Isaac, you're just going to go around, you're going to walk around, you're going to look at everything. Yeah? Right. So Isaac walks around, he goes over to this, he touches this over there, he sees this over there. Uh -huh. He walks over to the wedding dress, he puts his hand on the plastic, and he starts crying. <sighs> And everybody, and excuse my language, everybody in Video Village just goes, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, where did that come from? And how beautiful is that? And that is what makes any actor interesting. He bringing something from nothing that you're just going, what is going on? You know, what is going on with this person? So. Kudos to you, and I, I'm sorry if I took up your time, Isaac, but I just wanted to let people know how wonderfully accomplished I think you are. And Isaac's had the opportunity, he's traveled, he's traveled to New York, he's traveled to, to Japan, he's gone all over the place promoting, promoting the films that he does. And what an experience for you, young man, right? And I got my signed copy of Any Day Now, didn't I? Oh. Beautiful. I love it. Beautiful. So thank you, Isaac, for being here. That's just marvelous. John, oh, go ahead, Isaac. Yeah. Oh, what? What? You're welcome. Uh, well, it's a joy. I mean, it's people like you, actors like you, Isaac, and, and everybody at Performing Arts. John, we love you so much because, again, you have created this amazing space for such talent to grow and breaking through the, you know, they talk about glass ceilings, glass, listen, you're breaking through the glass walls, this, that, and the other. And I just want to say, we all absolutely love you. Oh, and I love you guys. And we're, so many of us are here to just say we love you. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello. 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 What, a, what a surprise, GM. Oh, that is sweet, you guys. Thank you so much. I love you. Oh, I love you too, bro. Man, I just got a double dose of love here. Hi, everyone. Fly, David, Zoom, and more than a double. Everybody. <laughs> Hey, John. Hey, John. Hey, hello to your uncle. Hey, hello to your uncle. Thank you so much. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. It's so yeah, so that's funny. What? I love you. Love you, Cupcake. Love you guys. What we love you. We cannot be lost with you guys. We cannot be lost without you guys. You are what makes this thing pop. You know? You I love you, John. The, the, the staff, the instructors, the, our participants, our actors, everybody working together as a team. Thank you, Thank you so much. It's just so sweet. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. On the count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. Happy anniversary! <laughs> Founded in 1998, Performing Arts Studio West, also known as PASW, provides hands-on individualized training, career management, and on-location support for performers with intellectual disabilities working in film, television, and commercials. Our year-round training program gives each performer the chance to explore their creativity, test their courage, show their determination, and build their self-esteem. PASW is a nonprofit affiliated arts program funded by the State of California Department of Developmental Services through the regional centers of the greater Los Angeles area. Performing Arts Studio West's main focus is to provide professional performing arts related training for adults with intellectual disabilities and create opportunities for them to work in integrated settings in the entertainment industry. The curriculum includes acting, music, dance, monthly performance showcases, and professional in-house productions. 
PASW actors have appeared in over 1,800 roles since the studio's inception in 1998. Performing Arts Studio West trains and represents actors and performers with Asperger's Syndrome, Autism, Down Syndrome, Cerebral Palsy, Seizure Disorders, and other developmental disabilities. PASW's Talent Management Department researches and submits clients for both disability-specific and non-disability roles for both union and non-union projects, including film, television, music videos, and commercials. Our management team takes headshots and develops resumes for clients who desire to work professionally. Acting instructors teach scene study, character development, cold reading, improvisation, and audition techniques in addition to on-set protocol. Our industry liaisons work with SAG-AFTRA, casting directors, producers and directors to promote and increase the hiring of performers with disabilities for entertainment industry projects. PASW produces in-house theater, original music productions, and choreographed dance shows year-round Performing Arts Studio West is now focusing on a uniquely creative endeavor, reconstructing classic childhood nursery rhymes through surreal, dark, and alternative art styles that are both imaginative and thought-provoking. This innovative multimedia project will include a full-color coffee table book, an art gallery installation, original music, animation, film, and 360-degree HD immersive environments. The project features work created entirely by PASW artists, actors, performers, and musicians who are being joined by celebrity guest artists from the entertainment industry. PASW performers have worked professionally with Oscar, Emmy, and Tony award-winning actors. Celebrities and other industry guests that have shared the experience of working and speaking with our talented actors include Brian Cranston, Charlize Theron, Dustin Hoffman, Joe Montaigne, Holly Hunter, Alan Cumming, Jim Jeffries, Peter Fonda, Mackay Pfeiffer, Lori Metcalf, Nisi Nash, Alex Borstein, Shailene Woodley, Molly Ringwald, Jennifer Garner, Mindy Sterling, Kat Dennings, Deborah Wilson, John Voigt, Sean Penn, Kurt Yeager, and Nick Novicki, among many others. Everyone has the right to pursue their dreams, a right to discover their passion and those who choose a path in the arts are among the most creative, expressive, and unique individuals among us. Sharing their talent is their gift to the world. Performing Arts Studio West is proud to walk alongside them on that journey. The future of state and federally funded programs is always uncertain. If you would like to support Performing Arts Studio West and help keep this vibrant program alive, along with the dreams of our performers, please visit our website at pastudiowest.com. Thank you, John. Thank you, David. Love you very much. Love you guys, each and every one of you. Thank you for everything that you do for the studio. And I look, I, I look forward to, you know, being through this and being back to the studio, whatever that looks like. Uh, everybody stay happy. Everybody stay healthy. And here's to many, many more wonderful and creative years. And we got such great, you know, listen, even though we're in this, in, in this period of time that we're going through right now, we got some great stuff that's going to be happening and things are just gonna explode. I think in the fall, things are just gonna absolutely explode. We're working so hard behind the scenes to make wonderful things happen, and uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be different. You know, it's a different world right now, and we're gonna to adjust to that world, and we're gonna keep growing, and creating, and loving each other, and, and making, making wonderful art, and wonderful music, and uh, we're gonna get after it, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.